to figure out how to do these, like, laying down on the ground. Okay. <sighs> last section. Last video. Let's talk about some interesting mineral deposits. Not that these only occurred here, but, you know, these are interesting events in mineral deposition, things that we eventually take out of the ground and utilize that happened during the Proterozoic. Okay, iron. So, again, those banded iron formations. This is where most of the world's iron ore comes from. Ore is the rock material to take out of the ground before we crush it up, melt it, chemically extract what we need to, however the process is. So banded iron formations are where most of the world's iron comes from. Iron is needed for steel. Steel makes everything, right? Cars, buildings, uh, bookshelves, bed frames, whatever. Um, Canada and the U.S. have the largest deposits of uh, banded iron formations. Um, and they occur kind of in the Great Lakes region as well as eastern Canada. And this is kind of a major reason, if we think back to car manufacturing, we think, you know, when car companies first got started, you know, Detroit. Almost all car companies kind of came out of Detroit, right on the Great Lakes there. Well, the, the reason for that, the reason car manufacturing was centered around the Great Lakes region is because this is where the iron was. You need iron to make steel, you need steel to make cars, so why not just be where the stuff is that you need to make frames, doors, engines, you know, whatever you need for your car. Let's go where the stuff is. Um... So, yeah, so they're close to the, the source of the steel. Also, being on the Great Lakes, um, it's an easy way to, to transport iron ore um, along the, the waterways as well. This is what an iron mine kind of looks like, kind of dirty. You can see that reddish hue, um, you know, kind of indicative of hematite or the darker stuff, maybe magnetite that they're extracting out, and maybe the red, churdy, jaspery stuff. Um, so, yeah, probably not the best place to work for your lungs. So, some of the major um, iron mines around, the, at least the U.S., um, come are these uh, yellow areas. So, around Minnesota, which still has heavy, uh, big uh, banded iron formation deposits, and then in the upper peninsula of Michigan. And you're getting this stuff, and you're able to, to take it to port. Usually, railways take it a short distance to the lake, to a port, where boats can ship it around to different areas where they take it to smelting blast furnaces to, to make steel. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the growth of Detroit, Cleveland, where I'm from, uh, Chicago even, and a number of cities. But you also get uh, some car manufacturing, even now still in Canada as well, kind of surrounding this because of this situation. So here's uh, the... Uh, iron ranges and banded iron formations. So Canada, USA. So here's Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan. So that's kind of in this area over here. These are still kind of your bigger areas where they're still mining out these banded iron formation, the iron ore in there. Um, there are a few other areas uh, where uh, iron deposits are located. One of them is down in uh, Alabama, and that's another reason we're now starting to see car manufacturing take hold in the South. I think uh, I have a Toyota Tacoma, and I'm pretty sure it was made in, like, Alabama or, or something like that. So there's car manufacturing uh, kind of picked up in, in the South as well because, again, you're close to the source of iron. Iron and steel's heavy takes a lot to move it around. So instead of doing that, just make cars where this stuff is. Uh, nickel. So nickel is another uh, m uh, mineral. It is a, a metal. Remember, most of the world's iron and nickel kind of sank to the, uh, to the core as differentiation occurred. But, you know, some of it stayed up in the crust as well. So there's these little pockets of iron, like these banded iron formations. And little pockets of nickel. So um, Ontario, Canada is um, an area that has some some good nickel mining, uh, along with platinum, that are coming out of some proterozoic rocks. Nickel is essential in making stainless steel, which is needed for different productions of steel, medical foods grade steel, those sorts of things. Um, it's used in rechargeable nickel cadmium batteries. So with the uh, rise in popularity of 
electric vehicles. One of the necessary minerals is nickel. Excuse me to make the to make um, these rechargeable batteries. The U U.S. must import almost all of the nickel that we use, and 45% of the nickel that we use we import from Canada uh, as of 2022. So most of the nickel, again, goes into stainless steel. Uh, again, stainless steel, this is this type of steel that won't rust. So that's what they use in, in uh, again, uh, medical tools. That's what they used in, in like, um, in food preparation and, and stuff like that, pots and pans and counters, stainless steel, because it won't rust. Um, nickel is used in different alloys for, for different things, sometimes rims, sometimes nickel plating for things like firearms, um, batteries, etc. Uh, and then oil and gas. So we're starting to see oil and gas deposits in proterozoic rocks. The reason being, oil and gas are fossil fuels. They're organic material, living material, that has died, decayed, and under the right conditions, that decayed material kind of got trapped, and due to a little bit of heat and a little bit of pressure, that organic material, whether it's algae in the ocean or, or otherwise, kind of changes uh, uh, um, the, the carbon structure a little bit to create fossil fuels like oil and natural gas. That's why it's called fossil fuel. It's from organisms that have died and decayed and kind of altered in the carbon cycle so but in any case to make fossil fuels you need fossils you need or old organic material that's dead and decayed and again we started to see the rise of that you know in the proterozoic we will see it elsewhere but oil and gas this is kind of where we kind of start to see that so recoverable economical and recoverable oil and gas have been discovered in some proterozoic rocks in china and siberia um, the mid-continental rift that we talked about as well that occurred in the Proterozoic, that could be a source of hydrocarbon fossil fuels. Um, so here's a distribution of kind of eight major basins uh, with oil and gas in kind of Proterozoic and then getting into Paleozoic uh, eras around the world. Um, so uh, yeah, China and Siberia are seeing kind of some big chunks but there's also again so this is the area where the mid-continental rift occurred so there might be some oil and gas uh, exploration there um, but we'll oil and gas production and fossil fuel production also occurs later but this is where we're starting to see it because you need um, organic material to die and it was in the proterozoic we got the rise of that Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, we have completed the Precambrian, the first, oh my gosh, almost four billion years of life, uh, of Earth's history, we of uh, geology, of Earth's life we've completed. Now we only have half a billion to go, 541 million years. Seems easy. Well, the issue is now we have much more evidence, much more rocks, much more fossils, so we're going to break the uh, remaining period of time. Uh, the into a few different um, eras. So now we're getting out of the Precambrian, which consisted of the Hadean, the Archean, and the Proterozoic Eon. And now we're getting into the Paleozoic era, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. So this is Unit 8. So we're going to take Unit 9 and 10 to go over the Paleozoic. Unit 9 is going to be more so the geology of it, 10, the life of the Paleozoic. Same thing with Mesozoic. Um, 11 and 12. Geology, 11. Life, 12. Same with the Cenozoic. 13 and 14. Geology, 13. Life, 14. And that will end our semester. So we're going to take the next six units and go over um, the Paleozoic, Mesozoic, Cenozoic, which is only a, a small bit of time, but yet so much information. So yeah, so in next unit, we'll start talking about uh, the Paleozoic, getting into finally the Cambrian. This is all pre-Cambrian that we've been talking about before the Cambrian period. And while Ediacaran fauna kind of started to take hold, it was in the Cambrian that all of a sudden we get this rapid diversification of life. All kinds of stuff. We're finding all kinds of fossils as we get into the Cambrian and then Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, which is sometimes split up into the Mississippian and the Pennsylvanian, and then into the Permian. So Paleozoic is where we'll play around the next couple of units, right? Um, it doesn't look all that much, but 
there's there's a lot to it again more rocks more fossils more evidence so we have much more to talk about and all of these eras the paleozoic mesozoic cenozoic uh in, are um part of what we call the phanerozoic eon phanerozoic eon um visible life so things we're starting to see they're starting to get bigger starting to diversify not only in the oceans things are eventually moving on to land good times good times all right um i think that's it well that has been one heck of a pre-cambrian journey so let's go ahead and, and pause there and uh yeah until next time i'll see you around